What's happening everybody? It is Trey here and I'm joined again by my dad Sean and today on Reactions to the Classics we are up in our journey of going through the Beatles discography to Yellow Submarine. Just like always, this is the first time we have heard uh, this record in full. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, y'all. We really appreciate it here. Reactions to the Classics. We take a look back at some of the most classic records of all time in a detailed track by track format and just like today it is usually the first time we've ever heard the record so that sounds like something interesting to you be sure to hit that big red subscribe button and if you'd like to link up with us more we have a pretty great Facebook group the link is in the description as well as our Patreon where you can support us and get some perks yourself and Sean we're up to Yellow Submarine it is considered an album but uh, it only has four new songs on it so this isn't going to be as long as our normal reviews but uh, all that to say let's uh, just dive into the quick facts yeah Trey as you mentioned it has four Beatles uh, original songs two others all you need is love and of course yellow yeah. submarine they're previously released to give you six Beatles songs then there's seven instrumentals that was re-recorded by Martin that he had put up for the film Yellow Submarine, which this is obviously the soundtrack for. Yellow Submarine premiered in July of 1968. They didn't release this album until January of 1969 because they didn't want to interfere with the White Album. And a lot of people kind of criticized the Beatles for releasing an LP that only had four new tracks. Uh, after the initial release, the Beatles were gonna release an, an EP with the four new songs, uh, as well as the uh, Across the Universe that yes. ended up being on Let It Be. But uh, that ended up never materializing. Yeah, and it didn't because Brian Epstein, before his death, had already signed the contract for this. Mm -hmm. So George Martin was guaranteed that second side. And obviously for anybody who's on a Beatles album, the royalties for that would be insane. So that would have cheated Martin out of that. The Beatles were under contractual obligations to provide four new songs to United Artists for this. Mm -hmm. uh, their, their enthusiasm was not high. They were coming off Sgt. No. Pepper's. They didn't really want to do that, uh, and the producer of Yellow Submarine had an interesting quote. Yeah, the producer's name was Al Brodax, and he said that there was a commitment for the Beatles to do four songs for the film. Apparently, they would say, this is a lousy song, let's give it to Brodax. So that kind of shows you what uh, some of the inside people thought of uh, of the new original listings in this. Yeah, inside people being the Beatles themselves, <laughs> so we're already gonna set the stage for this album. That kind of gives you an idea of where we're coming from. And on that note, we start out with the title track, mm -hmm. Yellow Submarine, sung by Ringo, was a huge hit back in the day, on the album Revolver. Revolver. So we've already reviewed it, but we're gonna do it again because you might not have watched it, but I highly recommend yeah. you watch Revolver. <laughs> this thing was written by Lennon and McCartney specifically for Ringo to sing. Went to number one in the UK, was the biggest selling uh, single of 1966 in the UK. Went to number two in the United States. It was just a nonsense children's song. Mm -hmm. As with many Beatles songs, people try to read in political or other meanings. Uh, both Lennon and McCartney multiple times said, look, it's just a kid's song. And in the vein of being a more fun children's type song, Martin drew on his experience as a comedy uh, producer and he went and the guys just ransacked the cupboard at Abbey Road and just found whatever crazy props that they could. There's thunderstorm machines, there's bells, whistles, cash register that's actually the one used on money yes. from Pink Floyd. I like this song, it's fine. I know some Beatles people hate it. It's fine, man. It is what it is. It's a yeah. fun little song. Ringo's doing his thing. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It's a fun for what it is. And that takes us to the first original song, Only a Northern Song. This is performed by Harrison, one of two on this uh, yes. this offering. And this was recorded during the uh, Sgt. Pepper sessions in 67, but was chosen to be left off the album because the other Beatles weren't a huge fan of this. And the subject matter relates to the city of birth of Harrison, which is Liverpool, and also what the, the copyright uh, company was, Northern Songs, which uh, had the rights to this song. So it's kind of a sarcastic tone almost. Yeah, only a Northern song. Yeah. And so this thing was, uh, Northern Songs was formed in 1965 by Lennon and McCartney uh, to save them from the tax liability from the overwhelming success of their songwriting uh, everywhere else mm -hmm. in the world. And so by doing that, they each had 15% stake in this company. Yeah, Lennon and McCartney. Lennon and McCartney. And they signed up Starr and Harrison as 
songwriter. So they had 0.8% for every song they did. Now, Harrison in 1964, Art was smart enough to form his own songwriting company before they even did called Harris Songs. But to keep harmony in the band, he said, sure, I'll do this. Well, then he starts to realize after a while that my other two guys here, Lennon and McCartney, are making all this money off my songs, yeah. and I'm making 0.8%. So be a little frustrating. That's the background for the song. For the song itself, I like it. Mm -hmm. I think it has too much horns in it that kind of drones on a little bit too long. Uh, you can tell immediately it's a Harrison song from that period of Sgt. Mm -hmm. Peppers. And lyrically, it wasn't as thought-provoking as I'm used to Harrison uh, yes. putting forth, but uh, you know, it, it was a fine track. Well, next up, we're all together now. McCartney wrote it. It's McCartney with Lennon mm -hmm. on singing it. McCartney described it as a children's sing-along with the title phrase inspired by the music hall tradition of asking mm -hmm. everybody to sing along, also with the dual meaning of we're all together now. This song is... <laughs> My least favorite song of the original songs by far. There's nothing to it. Yeah. I could memorize this song in about 60 seconds. It does stick in your head. Chop the tree. Yeah, Lennon comes in there. It is pretty catchy. It as is catchy because those those are the music hall. It's a, everybody joining in. Uh, for me, my least favorite original track. Yeah, same here. Um, yeah, it's, at least it's it's short. I mean, there's nothing hideous about no, it. It's no. just uh, when you're accustomed to McCartney. Uh, tracks from this period, uh, you, you think of something more than this, and McCartney himself wasn't a huge fan of this Yeah, he calls it a throwaway piece of garbage. <laughs> Next up, Hey Bulldog by Lennon. It was written by Lennon. It's one of the few Beatles songs based on a piano riff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that riff is very it's infectious. It is, and it was recorded during the promotional video of Lady Madonna. A few days before that, uh, McCartney had played drums on a Paul Jones rocker called The Dog Presides, and in that song, I guess there's some the spontaneous dog barking. So while they were recording this song, McCartney just started barking like a dog for no reason. So the next line that Lennon was gonna sing was, hey, bullfrog, and he changed it to, hey, bulldog. The guitar solo, which is very, very fantastic on here by Harrison, just worked right away. Harrison got it down. He used one of his new fuzz boxes. I liked Lennon's vocal performance here as well. Yes. The lyrics were nice, where in the chorus he's saying, you can talk to me, you can, if you're it has that it has that Lennon feel, man. Yeah. The vocals definitely. So, and as you mentioned, Sean, the the barking just gave it a more raw life feel to it. For me, this was my favorite of the original tracks. That takes us to the second Harrison original track. It's all too much. This was written in '67, and this has a, a couple different themes in here. It talks about the ideological. Um, message of the summer of love in 67 yes. as well as uh, the experimentation of LSD and how that opens you up uh, to extraordinary uh, ways of love or at least it did for George. This is my favorite song on the album. I think Harrison is just going up man over mm -hmm. these last three albums and uh, it's six minutes long too it's a longer song. Yeah and it was actually eight and a half to start with and they cut it down so yeah very long and it's for me like I said it's it's definitely the best song for me on this album. And I, I heard some you know 67 and whether they took some influence from Hendrix or not I don't know but at the start you have a, a something that sounds right off of Are You Experienced yes. with a bunch of guitar feedback so I enjoyed it for that. I think George hit all the high points here so uh, for me, this was another hit on the uh, new original tracks. Now we're up to All You Need Is Love, written by Lennon, number 370 in the Rolling Stones' Top 500 Songs of All Time. This was performed in the summer of 1967 on the Our World broadcast. Mm -hmm. It's a satellite broadcast over 25 countries. Uh, Britain's entry into this was this song. They wrote it simple for that reason. The lyrics are very simple. Mm -hmm. It's number one hit all over the world. Kind of became a uh, theme of the counterculture. It definitely sticks in your head. Some people hate this song, think it thinks it has too much political <laughs> message and that all you need is love. Uh, Lennon actually talked about the fact that at one time he was a violent man and so he turned totally the other way to love, mm -hmm. which this song fits that very well. And there's a bunch of samples from various things. You got something from Bach in here. You have portions of the French National Anthem yes. towards the end. I, I like you get the chorus of She Loves You in there. And so all in all, this was one of my favorite tracks on Magical Mystery Tour. Agreed. And on here as well. I just think it's a Beatles classic. Now we're going to get to the last seven songs. We're going to cover those very quick. I'll give you a quick background of them first. Martin re-recorded the orchestra parts. He brought them in in a two-day period in October of 
68 mm. and brought in a 41 piece orchestra <laughs> we're just kind of going to run down the songs for you to keep with our theme of and track by track every song in here was used at a certain portion in the in the film as well so it works some of these work you know visually when you're watching when you're the watching film, the film yeah, yeah and so we'll, we'll kick off with Pepperland. One of my favorites of the instrumental parts of this takes us right into Sea of Time. Features Indian classical instrumentation, opens with the Tampura drone. Then we go to Sea of Holes, which features a harp played backwards. So even George is getting into mm -hmm. this stuff. He first got the idea when he's mixing the next track, which is Sea of Monsters. Uh, he used a section from Box Air on the G string towards the end of the piece. And that takes us to March of the Meanies. And but I know one of the main dudes in there is the Blue Meanie, so I assume it, uh, this kind of has something to do yeah, with that. Yeah, that's why it kind of has a manic track because he's running away. Yeah. Lennon's running away from him in the movie. And that'll take us into the penultimate track. Pepperland Laid Waste. Pepperland's a place inhabited by music lovers and beauty. And then the film's antagonist, the Blue Meanies, they hate music and they hate beauty. They attack Pepperland, destroying the land's beauty. And that takes us right in to Yellow Submarine and Pepperland, which is the instrumental version of, of Yellow Submarine. Submar so it's kind of neat how we bookend it with Yellow Submarine submarine the actual lyrical you know song and then with the instrumentation portion and that'll take us right into our favorite tracks for me hey bulldog would be the top spot of the original ones and then all you need is love is one of my favorite Beatles songs so gotta give a shout out to that y'all yeah, go with it's all too much by mm -hmm. Harrison my favorite then all you need is love as you mentioned it's gonna take us to our overall grade mm -hmm. and guys this is very difficult to do an overall grade right because you got four original songs you got a bunch of instrumental things so, so from it's essentially an ep disguised as an lp <laughs> exactly and so for me it's going to be a 6.75 which for the beatles is insane because everything mm -hmm. i've rated has always been really high or almost real, you know in the nine or up range but you know it is what it is and they even mentioned mm -hmm. countless times that you know it's just throwaway stuff. They didn't want it for their stuff. Yeah, for me, I'm going to be in that same ballpark. I'm going to be at a six and a half on this. The four original tracks, two I think I'll go back and listen mm -hmm. to a lot. But they're not horrible. No. By they're none of it you listen to and go, man, what's but, going on But, you know, with that? you're just used to, in this period, Peppers and Magical Mystery Tour, White Album, Revolver. So Yeah, uh, very, it, it's the highest to... bar possible. <laughs> exactly. So um, that, I guess, is going to wrap it up from us today, y'all. Let us know what you think of Yellow Submarine. Um, the soundtrack and the movie if you've uh, watched that and uh, let us know your favorite tracks Sean I appreciate the research as always and uh, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button y'all we upload twice a week variety of genres so it'll be something for everybody I'm sure of it and uh, until next time y'all happy listening my friends we appreciate y'all and we will see you next time